On election day, we had uh, adoration here in the church for people to pray from nine in the morning until eight at night when the polls closed. And so I was here in front of the Blessed Sacrament and, and kneeling in front. And uh, as it got closer to eight o'clock, I, I just kind of remember just telling myself, it is finished. <laughs> you know, here, all of our efforts are done. And then I, right before I put the Eucharist back, I, I just kept re reminding myself, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. And I think that's what we all have to remember. Jesus Christ is Lord. When I was praying this morning, I looked out, and there's birds on my bird feeder. They're still there. The day after the elections, uh, the, the sun came out. It was a beautiful day. That's where I took the picture that's on the, the posters outside that says, Jesus Christ is Lord, to remind us, and it's on the front page. And I remember after it was, I, I brought the Eucharist to the chapel and went into the sacristy, I just felt like I, I just fought this huge beast for weeks. I didn't even know the intensity of it, that it and how it had overtaken me. But Jesus Christ is Lord. We have to remember that the things, you know, God's not defeated here. And he doesn't mean that we can't grow from this and God can't make good out of it. What also came to mind is uh, the Grinch that stole Christmas for some reason. You know, that uh, I was thinking about how, remember, the Grinch goes and he steals all of the, the food, the roast beast, the, the gifts, the decorations, everything. And so he's thinking that all the people of Whoville, that they're all going to wake up in the morning and just start crying. But then they came out in a circle and started to sing because they knew what was the truth of that day. Not what had happened or so, but the truth of the day. And that's what we are. And I, I was kind of thinking, I hope that we can be like that. That even though, you know, this Proposal 3 had passed, that we can still remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. That we would be like the people in Whoville, gathering around Jesus as the resurrected Christ. The one who, you know, died on the cross. The only one who was born, lived, died, but then rose again saying that he is Lord. And we have to remember that always. Not to lose hope, but he is Lord. And he tells us that in today's gospel when he's talking about the, the temple. You know, in other parts he goes and he says, I will destroy this temple in three days, I'll build it up. And he's not talking about the temple, he's talking about himself. But can you imagine what it must have been like for these people when they heard, especially his disciples, that this will be torn down? See, it was the most beautiful building probably anybody had ever seen. I mean, a lot of people just came, come from humble, you know, uh, domiciles and that, and little villages and that. They come to Jerusalem, you see this huge, big, you know, building, and it's adorned with stones and votives, and, and this is a place where, not, not just because it was a beautiful building, but this is where the Jewish people, the faith, had said that this is where God resides. This is where he is. And so when people came to the temple, it's where divinity and humanity met at the temple. It was so important to them. It's where there was forgiveness. It was where there was sacrifice. It's where they were taught. They were given instruction from the temple. So the temple was a major part of this faith. And so you can imagine when Jesus says this, what, what, what are you talking about? But then when he rose from the dead, they understood. They were talking about him. So now, he is the temple. He is where divinity and humanity come together. He is the one who gives instruction. He is the one who makes a sacrifice and gives forgiveness. Because Jesus Christ is Lord, and he proves that by his resurrection. Nobody else in the world, and, and has never been before and after, been born, lived, died, and then rose from the dead. He's Lord over time. He's Lord over everything. He created everything. All things are his. He designed it. And this is where even in the, the opening uh, prayer here, uh, it's taken, it says, the author of all that is good. He is the author of all that is good. And we all said, Amen the author of all that is good. But do we make him Lord? And even our, our, you know, the Romans at that time when the Christians were saying, 
Jesus Christ is Lord, they knew what that meant, and they were put into some fear because it's like, wait a minute, we've been brought up that Caesar is Lord, Caesar is God. Our government has this control. You know, we're the ones that are in power. And they knew that there was the danger because they were saying that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is, and they should be afraid because ultimately it's God and his design, his desire of all that we should be doing. And we always have to keep in mind that we keep all of these events that happen in the world, especially those that, are, that, are, um, that make us feel wrong or bad, uh, that we're sad about, that we're not happy about, that we always have to keep in the context of eternity and how we now live even among this, to trust God and his providence and that God guides and shapes all of these things, that God uses them to redeem us, to sanctify us, to make us think, to say, what went wrong? What is our part? What do we have to do? That God makes good out of all bad situations. And I've been thinking about this. It's like, I think that that's what we have to keep in mind. What do we learn from this? We have to acknowledge that we as a church, that we as a society, we, we as disciples of Jesus Christ, we haven't really gone out and really told people about the truth of who Jesus Christ is and the Lord and that all life is sacred. And we must do that. We, we now have to be challenged to say, we got to reach out to those who are expecting and that we help them, those who have chosen to, uh, for life and to, say, and to help them, to especially help those in an even greater way, unfortunately, for those who will be ending an abortion or an ending a life and then reaching out to them in the pain and sorrow that comes after that. We, we've got a lot of work to do but to think about our society and where they do not see life as God, the author of all that is good, recognizes it. And I guess over these past few weeks, I've been thinking about, you know, isn't it true that all, when we were all children, at some point we came across somebody who was pregnant, somebody who was expecting, it might have been your own mother or a relative or so or a neighbor, and it was the first time you come to, to hear, oh, there's a baby in there. And you go, oh, there's a baby in there. And you, you, you get it, you believe it. And then when the baby is born, it's like, that was the baby that was inside the womb. But then at what point then, for those who are pro-choice, at what point from that simple understanding as a child did you learn that it's not a life anymore, that it's not a baby? What was going on in your life at that time? What was the brokenness or, of yourself or somebody else? Who did you go and you listened to that you came to say, yeah, it's just a clump of cells? At what point did you believe something else or somebody else instead of God, the author of all life? And I think that's something that we all have to reflect on. You know, when you take a Petri dish, dish as they do, they place an egg and a sperm there. When it unites, it's a human being. It's not a clump of cells. You protect it. You, you know what, it's going to, what it is. And so somewhere we, we have to be convicted of who we are. And I think this has brought us to all people to kind of stop and think, where is our conviction on, you know, life issues? And I think that's a good thing. Now we have to realize, what are we going to do? And we all learn from our mistakes. Every child learns from their mistakes. Even as adults, when you make mistakes, then it's like, you know, now I, have to, now I know what I need to do next. And this is our challenge. And the challenge is to re remind ourselves that God will sanctify us in these things. It's like he opens our eyes to it. But we also know that God does not let go. God does not let it go of you or me. He's still love. He's still there. He's still Lord. He's in control. And he's loving and forgiving and merciful. But he doesn't let go. And neither should we. And we shouldn't lose hope. Jesus Christ is Lord. So my brothers and sisters, we come here today and that's what I want to give to you, is it? Again, Jesus Christ is Lord. I just remember when praying there, seeing Jesus Christ is Lord, and I didn't even know if Proposal 3 was going to pass or not, but I just knew if it passed, he's still Lord. If it didn't pass, he is Lord, you know, still. 
And we have to remember that always, never giving up hope, but reflecting on how now, looking at all these things in light of the eternal and how we will be face to face with God and how we, God has designed this and how we took that upon ourselves to be able to let the love of God grow. If he designed it, he, he made it all, then he's the author of all that is good. He's the author of life. And why would we then trust anything else other than him, who is love? And we can be deceived, as Jesus says in the gospel today, too. Do not be deceived. Be, be concerned. Watch out. And so I think, ultimately, that's the good that comes out of this, is that it makes us think and reflect and think where perhaps we say, well, Jesus Christ is Lord here, but not over here in our lives, when he is the author of all that is good. And we are to be his disciples, beloved sons and daughters, who trust him. And we pray that more and more now that we can trust him and that we will trust him and seek his will and his guidance. Because I'll be honest, it kind of makes me sad that I, I've heard that some people said that they won't come back to church until after the elections because they didn't want to hear my homilies or Father Jim. What makes you think that the church is here and has nothing to say or nothing to teach? Where did you shut off and why? Where's the brokenness? What did you hear that was not from the Lord? He's good, he's loving, he's truth. You can trust him, and he's hope. Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, is Lord.